Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create and we're working on you and me and this is page two. Page two. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here and I've done this um, this block design before. Um, when did I do it? I think I did it in Let It Be. Yeah, so not that long ago. So we're gonna start with a flap which is seven and a half by eight and a half, seven an inch, seven and a half across eight and a half inches tall. So it's basically the same height as the pocket page. You're gonna score a half inch on the seven and a half inch side. We're gonna install it flush to the left hand side. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to double check that I'd actually hit the record button. Okay, I wanna make sure I've got it right side up and I do. There we go. That's off a little bit, but I'm gonna clean that up in a second. Um, then the next thing we're gonna install is this pocket, which is three and a quarter inches wide, three and a quarter inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch on three sides and it's gonna go flush with the right hand side. I'm going to turn it so that I can see uh, both of my edges. I'm going to put one corner down, use it as a pivot point. There we go. There's my pocket. All right. And then um, we've got two pieces that we're gonna join together. So this is seven by seven and a half, seven by seven and a half, and you're gonna score at one inch. We're gonna leave that as is. The second one is going to be seven and a half by seven and a half, so it's a, it's a square. This one, um, you're going to score one inch, and then rotate it around and score a half inch, okay? So these two things are gonna get joined together and I'm going to take both of the one inch sides that are scored and I'm going to match them up. I'm gonna go ahead and crease this side. Like so. So it's actually gonna go like this. So we're gonna take both of our free edges and match up our score lines. Okay, like so. I'm gonna take off my tape. There we go. And again, we're gonna match the free edges and then the score lines should be toward the center, okay? And you know what, I, I'm having a hard time keep getting things straight, so I'm gonna put a little glue on my tape um, to give me a minute to adjust. I think I had coffee after dinner, and that's always a mistake. Oh well, it is what it is. There we go. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So you, here's that one inch that we scored, then the half inch, and then when you close it, it should marry up nicely on the edges. So it makes this sort of card function. What is that? I don't know, but I'm gonna try to get it off. It'll be under, but something sticky, I think. So I'm gonna burnish this. So the way this is going to work is this one inch piece is gonna go inside the pocket. This half inch is actually going to get installed on this flap. So we're gonna get our tape, we're gonna get it lined up. We're going to close it and then when the tape picks it up, when we open this all the way like so, then we're able to open this card. 
Okay, and then when we close it, it gets tucked back into the pocket. Okay, I gotta deal with my dog. I'll be right back, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is install this, and then the last thing is we'll, I had to straighten that out while I was away. Uh, the last, last thing we'll do is add our magnets, okay? So again, here's, here's what we have. We have this card insert. So we've got a half inch score here, one inch score on either side. And you really don't have to score this one. I did that just so you could match it up. Um, we're going to install this half inch flange on the flap. And I need to put some tape on here. I'm using 3 8 inch score tape. And it fits pretty good on the um, on a half inch score line. It doesn't cover it perfectly, but pretty good. And that way you don't have any tape showing on either side of the score line or the free edge. Okay, so the way this is going to work is probably want to go ahead and figure out what my center line is, so let's do that. Let's, let's get a center line here. So the, the center point should be four and a quarter from one of the edges if you don't have a, a zero or a center finder ruler. Oh, actually I need to do that up here, sorry. Four and a quarter and four and a quarter. Okay, now I wanna find the center line of this and then we could match that up. Um, and that'll tell us what the center is here. And the center line for this piece is going to be three and three quarter from either one of the edges. Okay, so I'm going to match that up. And again, I'm going to eyeball it a little bit too. It doesn't have to be perfect, but. Oh, it's getting stuck on um, that flange. So I'm going to burnish it down a little harder the edges aren't uh, picking this up. There we go. Okay. Now you want to make sure this hinge is free to open. So you're going to slide it into the pocket and then you're going to open up your card and that's where it should be. That's where it should lie. Okay, and so this gets basically tucked in. So that's all gonna work. So this is this uh, hinge is actually gonna go on here. But right now I'm just testing it to make sure this will open. And it does. So now I know I'm okay to set, to set my um, hinge down. That's about right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is when the whole thing is closed, we can close this over and pick up our tape right here. So I'm just trying to make sure it's going to go in straight. And then we're gonna test it one more time, but it should be just right on. Now when we open it, see how it's pulling the card out with it? And that opens up, okay? So this little piece right here is, um, needs, we are gonna need to put a decorative strip on here. And the reason is, when we go to close this, oops, when we go to close this, if this part of the card is a higher elevation, when we try to close it, it's gonna get hung up on it. So we want um, that one inch strip 
to have the same height as this panel. So we will put a decorative strip here, but the way this is supposed to function is once that's inside the pocket, it really doesn't come back out. But we don't want it to get hung up when we're trying to close our card, okay? And it's working smoothly now because it's all the same surface. So if we add decorative paper here, we wanna add it there. All right, so that's enough of that for now. I am going to, oh, I just realized something. We should have put our decorative paper down before this um, so that this would be right on top of it. So I'm actually gonna undo that. Um, and then the last thing we'll do is add, so I'm gonna undo it, add our decorative paper, and then go through that same process again. So sorry about that, guys. I haven't done this in a while, so I sometimes forget the process. I'll be right back. Okay, I finally got it together, guys. So I've got my papers lined up and we're ready to figure these things out. We can go ahead and add our magnet because we know where it's gonna go and it's not going to impact the placement of um, the interior uh, mechanism. So let's go ahead and do that before I make a mistake and forget because it's uh, one of those days, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this over. I'm gonna put a small reference line so I can you know, determine where to place the magnet far enough away from the edge that we get good coverage, but not so close to the line that we're off um, on this side. So try to clear up my field of vision and yours as well. So much going on. And then I got to one more time verify I've got my yeah orientation correct. And I do before I start gluing papers down. Even though we sit and do this in one sitting, um, I'm not always doing it that way. So sometimes I walk away, I'm gone for a half an hour or whatever, so I have to keep checking. So that's why you see me do that throughout the process. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay that in. You know what? That just doesn't feel strong enough. So I'm going to do two magnets. I'm gonna move this here and then have one here. And these are um, the smaller magnets that we sell. We do have some bigger ones, so if you if you have some of those, actually I do, maybe I can. The reason I don't like these is they're taller. So I'd rather use four of these, because they're slimmer, especially when you're doing anything with white paper, because, or a white background in the paper, because it really shows the dimension. So, you know, you're gonna see that rise more on uh, a white background paper than you would uh, a darker paper. Even if the paper's thick, it just, you can, you can sort of see it. Okay, so that looks like right. And I'm just verifying that I'm above that line. I'm just gonna roll that off. This is all gonna get covered with paper, so it's not that important. In fact, let's go ahead and cover it because I've got that paper right here. And honestly, I've shuffled my paper so much. I'm not sure if it's coming from the 12 by 12 scrapbook pad or from the backgrounds. Um, and at this point, I've used one scrapbook pad and two of the 12 by 12 backgrounds. I've cut into those. Um, even though we're only on page two, I've, I've pre-cut some stuff, so. All right, got rid of that. Uh, yeah, so looking on the back, I can see it's the back sheet of the uh, background pack. It's not always that obvious when I flip it over. so that I can see three of the four edges, or yeah, three of the four edges so I can get it centered and placed. Okay, now we need to go ahead and move this magnet and then add a second one. Okay. 
I use double-sided tape. You don't have to. You could use um, just regular tape. But do cover your magnet with something because um, it doesn't, the glue doesn't want to dry on top of that metal. I mean, it will, but um, even if you just use scotch tape right here. Um, but, you know, make sure it's kind of a thin tape uh, because the more layers you put between the magnets, um, you know, the less attraction they'll have. Okay, so yeah, I like that a lot better. That felt a lot better. Okay, so what's next? So I've trimmed out some papers. I think I'm gonna do that. And that's upside down, so it's gonna go like this. And then I have this paper right here. Isn't this beautiful? I, I think this paper is so pretty. Both of them I think I had upside down, which it kind of goes all over the place, but I'm following the pattern of uh, the vine. So it, I, I assume a vine would go up. Okay, so this is gonna slide ever so slightly into the pocket. Now we're gonna do this so we have this alternating pattern. This is gonna go here. And um, let's go ahead and burnish that down a little bit. trim this down to fit. Yeah, I do. Okay, I need to take a sliver off. Not much, about a sixteenth of an inch. off. Isn't that lovely? So that's the inside. Now we're going to take our um, the mechanism that is going to fit inside the pocket, like so. Um, and I, I've tested it so I know it's going to work out just fine. So I'm comfortable going ahead and adding my tape and then closing this. So the one thing I do want to do is find my center line again. So I'm going to find the center here and the center here and line those up. And then we will uh, add our tape and just close it. And then we'll tuck this side in, but we still need to dress it. So we could actually do that outside of the book. Yeah, let's do that before I um, install it. So set this aside. Yeah, just making sure I'm happy with my... Um, so I'm, I'm putting it back in for a second because I want to see what paper is going to work here. 
Now, I want something kind of simple, so let's go with this. What do you guys think? I like it. Okay, so let's verify. No, we don't need to verify. We're going to trim this. Where's my pencil? Here it is. So we're going to trim this, which is going to go on that one inch piece. as hard as possible. Let me go this this way. So I just did a 7 8 inch strip. Okay. So this is going to go like so, right here. Okay, now remember the idea is we want it to feel smooth across this surface and this surface. So we want it close um, to the score line, but not in the score line. Ooh, I like that side too. <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think? Maybe it's too much pink. We'll go with the, the gray. So I am going to center it up and down, and then I'm gonna push it as close to the hinge as I can, and then I'm gonna open it just to make sure there's no interference. Man, this is some thirsty paper. It's like the second I lay it down, it's dry. I'm gonna open it and make sure there's no interference and it's fine. Okay, now I'm gonna trim this out. All right. I just decided to decorate it outside of the book because it's just flatter. I need to refill my glue. Okay, this needs tape. Should be nice and dry now too because I undid it so we could get our designer paper down. Okay, let's burnish, burnish, burnish. And then I don't have any the rest of my paper picked out, so let's go ahead and install this. And this is gonna go in like so. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Should have a half inch on either side.
looks good to me. So I'm gonna push it straight into the hinge. Okay, and then I'm gonna close it. And it's, even as I'm closing it, it's pushing it a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Now we still need to decorate the inside. Make sure your corners are down really well because it will want to try to grab right there when you go to close um, your page. Okay, all right, so we need a cover and then we need these two inside liners. I like this um, design, I think it's fun and this will hold you know larger size paper, uh, photos. Uh, it's a pretty good size for both here and here. Then of course you could add another photo here if you do, you'll want to raise this level again so that it doesn't hang up uh, on the difference between the heights, okay? All right, guys, I'll be back shortly with the rest of the design papers and we'll wrap up page two. All righty, everyone, I'm back and I've got it all lined up. So we're gonna pull this pattern back in. It's okay, I have that upside down. It's gonna go right here on the cover. Then we are gonna color block this, so it is gonna need to be trimmed, but let's go ahead and get this down. It's wide enough that I'm comfortable. Um, well, let's see. I mean, the other thing is we can install the thinner one first and then trim this down to fit. Let's do that. Let's do that, because the wider it is, the easier it is to uh, deal with in the trimmer. Looks good. Okay, now let's trim this to fit. Isn't that pretty? And then I think this, you know, sort of begs for a nice uh, photo mat right here. And uh, let's see. Seven by four and three quarters. So that's a seven by four and three quarters. Um, I think a, a five by seven would look lovely here. And I actually think the color blocking um, makes it look a little nicer. Okay, I've also lined up what's gonna go on the inside. And this is from the um, scrapbook pad, which is the equivalent of what I call a collection pack from Graphic 45. And the backgrounds are what would be compared to patterns and solids. And I kind of go back and forth on those terms because I'm so used to working with graphics. So hopefully it's not terribly confusing. If I say patterns and solids, what I really mean on Stamperia is that it's background. Okay. 
I really normally like to use my tags, but having said that, there's so many other cut aparts um, and I am going to use the die cuts that I don't feel like I need to, to use these. Um, I'd much rather just have the pattern paper on the flip side. Okay, well, I hope you guys are enjoying this. We are winding up or winding down page two of You and Me. Okay, I'm gonna brush all that into place. I got a little something in there. Okay. that bowed a little bit when I added the glue that the moisture so if this is uh, if these corners lift when you go to close it it's not going to want to close so just iron it out with your hands you want to make sure those corners are down so that it'll go in I think I had this problem with the first one I did too so you just have to train it a little bit there you go that's it that is page two, everyone. Isn't it beautiful? Now, I am going to pull this pattern back in and probably the polka dots to go on the opposing page three. I haven't finished the design, but I definitely know I'm going to pull that in. And then I'm also going to do some embellishing um, on this page, but I'm, I'm kind of holding off until I have page three completely designed so I know how to balance my embellishments. Um, as always, when you're using embellishments inside your book, um, between a, a two page spread on um, you want to make sure that you're not stacking all your embellishments right on top of each other so you want to um, make sure they're juxtaposed so that when you close your album they're not interfering with each other all right that's it for page two guys i'll be back soon thanks again for for watching as always um, we really appreciate it. it means a lot to us it really helps our business um, the exposure that we get through YouTube is really how people find us on our shop. So if you're in the United States or in of it, any of its territories, you can find us at Scrap and Create, www.scrapandcreate.com. All of the papers that you see featured in the online tutorials uh, are available in our shop. And we really appreciate it if you give us a shot. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Daphne. See you soon. Okay, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little scratchy throat this morning. Uh, we're going to... I decided I want to do some embellishing on top of page two, so we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. As you recall, we have this on the inside, which is a card that opens. I am going to add a mat of coordinating card uh, designer paper. This is four and a half by five and a half, so four and a half by five and a half. And it just happened to be a scrap I had. This is one of the cut apart pieces, and so I'm going to double mount this. Um, after sort of laying in and looking at my plan for page three, I decided I needed a little something here. Now, of course, this is optional. I think it's very pretty. Most of the time I design my album so that the photos go on the inside of the flaps. So you've got room for a photo here, photo here, and two more here. So there's lots of room for photos on the inside. And I just think this will make it look prettier on the outside. But if you want to reserve this space for a large photo, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and add this element. <clears throat> And then I'm going to add this. So I don't know if I want it off center or centered. I think I like it centered. I'm not uh, making this dimensional just because I want it to close nicely against the opposing page. Um, I think I'm going to do a pocket page for page three, which means it'll be relatively flat. So in the end, I may come back and add a little something uh, to this after I'm completely uh, designed page three. And so I have, you know, just a ton of these cut aparts and the die cuts yet to be used in the album. So I might put, say, something here that makes it obvious that this is how you open the page. I haven't decided. So that's it for uh, page two. Be back soon with page three.